Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of the greatest movie podcast ever made. Uh, title? This is... <laughs> Best intro ever. Uh, please welcome my co-host, Bosco. Um, this podcast is uh, basically no, a way of <laughs> reviewing some famous movies and shit. <laughs> we are... More specific, what, are we, what list are we using? We are... I was just... You know, I was just about to get that. What a great question. We are using the AFI... Top 100 movie list, somewhat modified, because what we're actually going to do is we're going to go down the whole list based off its most recent ranking, 2007. But first, we are actually going to go down the films that were cut in the transition from the 97 list or the 98 list into the 2007 list. And uh, so the first film on our list. Where's that list located? Huh? I'm looking for that list. <laughs> Where's that list? <laughs> the first film on that list is. Uh, it was ranked 99th on the 1998 original list and was removed from the list during the transition to 2007. And that film is Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, starring Spencer Tracy, Sidney Poitier, and Katherine Hepburn. It's a 1997 edition. They do it every 10 years. What are you talking about, 1998? 98 on the Wikipedia page. That's what I thought as well as far as the next. I'm looking at the AFI site. Anyways, um, so the point of this podcast is uh, to basically review a lot of uh, generally considered good or probably great movies to be on this oh, list, never mind. Never and mind. offer our uneducated, like shitty opinions about it. So we're not doing Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah, we're doing Yankee Doodle Dandy. We're starting at ninety nine, and oh my god, can you not read? I'm <laughs> confused. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I mean. In case you guys can't tell, we are uh, highly professional and rehearsed and put a lot of preparation into our podcasting. So basically... Oh, it's uh, 98. I got you. Yeah, you got me. You got me. Um, so I guess we might as well just get right into it because I don't fucking know of any segues that exist other than the one Job rides on Arrested Development. Um, so what did you think about Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Or should we give a little plot synopsis first? I think you should give a, pl- a plot synopsis. All right. And I'm not editing this out either. You guys get to see our decision process live. So basically, the film tells a story of a young couple, an interracial couple, an African-American male, and a Caucasian female who fall in love in their brief... In ten time. days. In Hawaii. It was ten days, correct? In, in their ten days in Hawaii. And then return home... Uh, to meet the uh, girl, uh, Joanna, or Joey, as her parents call her, his parents. And uh, there's never any actual dinner had in the movie, um, but... That's it, one thing that I was really annoyed about. <laughs> <laughs> it was a build-up of this dinner, and it never occurred. Well, because every, everything, like, good, and um, basically... And then, no, no, but that's the, the, I gotta, I gotta spoil this a bit. And then you have the, the black housemaid. She was making all this food for them, and they said, fuck it, no <laughs> dinner for anybody. And she used to make all this food. It was, she was so pissed. Yeah, we'll get to the sassy black housemaid. I think I think that's a, a major point. Um, but basically what happens in the story is they return home, and a lot of it is dealing with the racial and like civil issues of the time. This film came out in 1967, as I think I mentioned before. And so... There was a lot of interactions with her parents, as well as a friend of her parents, a local priest, uh, Monsignor Ryan, I believe his name was, as well as eventually the um, the male, uh, Dr. John Prentice's parents, who come up from Los Angeles to join in for dinner as well. And I'm not kidding, at one point, uh, Catherine Hepburn, I can't, her character's name was Chris, short for something, uh, she legitimately says, guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> and that's we you don't need to watch the movie anymore. Once they say <laughs> the title in the film, it's done. That's the commercial, done, set in stone. Oh, you didn't like it then? Oh, no, it was terrible. I actually liked this movie. I was expecting it to be, I thought it would be on the list. I guess we can start talking about it now. Um, I'll I give thought, a cynical approach. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought it would be on the list at first because of its like social thing, like, Oh yeah, it was a big film at the time. Like black and white people, they never got it on, and I'm sure, uh, but it was actually like a good movie that I thought still related, not as much, but still somewhat. Today, like at one point, the um, I think this is what gave me the thought that uh, that it still applied today. At one point, they say like 
how it's illegal in half the states, right? In the southern states, or whatever. And then someone says like the laws, might, yeah, the the laws might change, but the way people think about you still won't, right? And I, I I thought I thought that was really applicable because there still are definitely racist people today. Um, and there always will be. And there always <laughs> and everyone's racist in some degree, but that's a little bit too far fetched. I don't think we have to delve into racism as a whole. I think we should maybe focus on racism in this film, because I think the main conflict of uh, Spencer Tracy's character, Matt, the father, isn't actually so much that he dislikes the Doctor, right? It's more that he uh, he has a hard time like contemplating the fact that he might be a racist, right? I, I think it's more because he's worried about his daughter, because uh, she he, all the shit she's gonna get for it, not like that he's a racist. I I didn't think he is. I think he's just more worried about what's gonna happen to him, the reaction to other people. So in in essence, he he kind of mirrors the reaction other people's gonna have by him being afraid of the reaction. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like that's uh, I thought that um the priest really like in his conversations with his friend the priest right that's where he really got like oh yeah the most honest conversation out of him I would say. That was like the only comedy bit about it when he was making fun of the liberal, being hard liberal, being a racist. I know. I actually on the uh, what other scene did I find funny? The um the the scene when the priest first shows up and it was like ten seconds long, right? But and then he just goes like he he's he's like the only person who we see in this film, other than maybe her friends they're at the bar with for like twenty seconds or whatever. Who he comes in and he just thinks it's great that they're together, right? No matter what race they're. But then he he just goes, guy, well I thought I hope you've thought this out very well, and like no, nope, we haven't. <laughs> Oh yeah, I thought that was pretty that was my ma- like cause this is my like really cynical view about this entire movie. It wasn't the fact that this was had had to do with any race relation thing. So if if anything, I think this was really half baked and terribly done, and and it was just so cheesy and poorly executed that it didn't really actually answer any of these questions. It was more like a play, you know, like it could have been like Cats for all I cared about. It was just so slow and so dragged on, and I guess it was kind of a piece. To be analyzed, but in really, reality, it really wasn't analyzed. Shut the fuck up, Sar. I don't want to go <laughs> offline. That's steam. But it was just, it was like, it, it was a point where, like, it had to be quote unquote analyzed. But I mean, it was not really well done because people don't, I don't think they realistically act like this. And this is a movie because they, they can't, they can't bring, I guess, real world events. I guess I, we'll go that concept that it was, people do act like this. I think, I don't think a lot of people do. Like, just the way they act, reacted. It was like so slow and, like, I mean, it just felt like it dragged on forever. But maybe let's say they did. So if they did, then no one – very rarely would somebody say it's okay for their daughter to marry somebody after knowing them for 10 days. Yeah. I don't I – don't, I think that's the biggest issue because that's the Hollywood aspect to it, and that's where the bit where like falls apart. That's where they break like, the fourth wall. It's like, well, because they – wanted it to be realistic but then they broke the fourth wall with the parents not being upset about the 10 days but only being upset with people's reaction over it being a racial thing and i thought that was completely ridiculous because this, this is me looking at it as a more uh, liberal more open progressive stance i don't think i don't care about that at all i just care about the fact that it was 10 days i'm like that's a little ridiculous that's not gonna last i i do i do agree that like i th- well but it wasn't that the point of the movie that like they were they were trying to bring out that the parents' concerns were race based when like clearly ten days was very quick and like only the priest who didn't care about the race issue seemed to actually talk about like what they were getting into like when he said are you like know what you're getting into and the guy goes no right because he was the only one that was actually thinking about it as a normal relationship I think that's a good point but that's so minuscule part of the movie I think it's like a combined maybe like one to two percent of like all the dialogue. I don't think that's the real the real underlying message of it. I think that was just kind of like this sort of happened by mistake. <laughs> um, I and about it going long, there was one point exactly when fuck I can't remember the line, but it's before like that kid shows up, the the delivery kid shows up, and her mom is kind of like looking out, and I don't know she says some fucking line when when he when she goes like I don't know she says something like Joey's Joey or something right. That it was like it was a bit past half an hour in, and that's what it felt like this movie could have ended as a short film. But I was actually oh definitely like at first when when they uh, when the kid comes out with like to deliver right, I'm like oh here they fucking go like they're introducing just random crap to keep it going for another hour right. But we only we didn't see that kid again right. He was there I think to provide kind of a backstory for the maid's distrust of interracial relationships, and I was actually really happy with the movie the way it continued. I don't know. I, I kind of like dozed off. I was like on YouTube or whatever, watching other videos, watching what's going on, and reading things on Reddit or something. Because it just—I don't know—it just felt like 
it just dragged on. Like the dialogue was nice and long and it was so impersonal and just felt like poop on a stick. At, at, at times I did feel like kind of going to get distracted, but like almost as a service to myself, I guess. I don't know. Because well, you're doing this professional. I'm just doing this as a sidekick, so I don't really care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was coming with my, you know, my, my, my belt undone, you know. Pistols cocked and shooting everywhere, you know. But you know, the only thing that kept me interested was the backstory behind, like Catherine Hepburn. She never watched this movie ever because oh yeah, because love... didn't, cause didn't, uh, didn't uh... Spencer Tracy died like 17 I... days afterwards. 17 comes up a lot about with this uh, movie. 17 states, 17 days after Hep Tracy's death. Is that 17 is a big number with this freaking movie? It's crazy. Well, I mean, they didn't know Tracy was gonna die. So well, yeah. I'm saying in instance, I believe just... he did receive an Oscar nomination. I think they both did, Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, for this movie. Oh, yeah, because... I can actually go find the full list of awards. I'm sure uh, you could. Uh, I guess we'll go over this quickly. Catherine Hepburn actually won the Academy Award. It also won the Academy Award for Screenplay and was nominated for Picture, Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress, and the two nominated for that, I believe, were the Black Parents. Negro Parents, as they put it. Right. Uh literally correct here. Right. Oh, yeah. That reminds me of, one of another line I just found hilarious, just because the only performance I didn't really like in the movie was um, was Joey's. She was just like, there was no actual conflict to her character, was my issue, right? But yet she's she was too still, bubbly. It yeah, was annoying. I, just fucking, like when she said this line, I just found it hilarious. I wrote it down. Where is it? it? She goes, just so happily, he thinks you're going to faint because he's a Negro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did like a couple scenes where uh, Catherine Hepburn um, fired that lady. Uh, and gave her five grand. Was, uh, it was like so. Gr- it was so. At- this is one bit where it was actually written very well. The dialogue, like yeah, everything else, was boring. Was but that was written fine. so well, and I loved it. But yeah, because yeah. just before that, I was like, man, that Hillary lady's such a fucking cunt, right? <laughs> and she goes <laughs> into the car, and she's just like, I never want to see you or your stupid little sculpture ever again. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about? I guess we can kind of delve into specifics now. I think we've given our general opinions on the movie pretty well. I thought it was a good movie that lulled a bit in the middle, but had a really like I really I found the ending really uh I guess powerful. Like I found his monologue. It was a long monologue. It was at least five minutes of just uh, Spencer Tracy talking, but I still found it actually like really good, really well written. Um, what did you feel about the opening sequence? Because my opinion of this was it was really interesting. The opening sequence to me. Felt like the closing sequence of like. I don't remember the opening of, sequence was honestly. <laughs> like when the plane comes in and then they're like getting off the plane and they're going around the airport together and shit. That happened. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. It it, it could have. I think it could have been done more ch- movie cheesy wise. It was kind of like, oh, okay. I thought they were gonna like bring in the cheese factor on that. Yeah. I thought they should have, but they didn't. Like they could have been like, oh, like they could have like a r- random white pilot come off with her, and they've been talking. It's like, oh, and then they're like, and he's like, <laughs> they carry the bags in the background. And he's like, oh. it's, and he tip, and he tips the black, she tips the black guy or something, and it's like, oh no, that's 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 um, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted it to be an actual comedy. That's that is my thing. And, and Maybe you should watch the remake with Ashton Kutcher and uh, Bernie Mac. Yeah, that's I I heard that is I remember that, but that's when <laughs> Ashton Kutcher is now the odd man out. And he drives go karts and stuff. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Watch that? <laughs> no, I saw an advertisement the commercial for it. <laughs> I only found out of it like while getting this set up. Um, I I'm, I heard Kirby talk about it, and I was like, oh man. Oh, that's the one he saw. No, no, he was like, wait, well, you're talking about the new one? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like and then, how your Australian accent for Kirby is like some like tough case. What you talking about the new one? Huh? I'm Sylvester Stallone from Australia. I don't, know, I don't speak English. Um, one thing I found funny in the opening credits was, I don't know why I saw it, it's probably because I was just, like, watching it full screen, but during the opening credits, the, uh, hairstyles, like, were provided by Helen Hunt, and I'm like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> it can't be. So I looked it up, and she was four years old when the movie came out, so that's... Wow, probably... she must be really, like, a prodigy or something. <laughs> For that. <laughs> it's always possible. I did like how the opening song got a little reprise in the bar, as well, from the opening sequence. Although it was super weird how they had like the full band playing during that, because I think it was just the recording again, like a different recording. But on the shot, it was only the lady playing piano. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't have anything to say about the music. I kind of just like tuned it out. I thought the score was like fine. It wasn't anything special, but like it was certainly never felt out of place when they had music. I, I, like it, it was. It was just in the background. I didn't really pay attention to it. It didn't really. Then where you, 
able to like I don't know like I'm the tune from any of the songs and like I couldn't and I'm talking about it right now. It, it didn't take anything away from the movie, but it didn't like add anything, so it wasn't like amazing. It didn't. I think that's fair. Um, <laughs> one thing I found funny with the movie was the uh, there's a couple things I wrote down other than the stuff I mentioned earlier. First off, when they were driving from like the art gallery to the house, how what I might have been a real shot from the airport to the art gallery was now suddenly one of those like shitty ass like back screen projection taxis and you could tell yeah. it was really obvious. Um they did a lot and it kinda of annoyed me. <laughs> I thought it was most obvious there. Like I don't know, maybe some of what the taxi drivers had and like the screen behind them, but just well, just watch the the steering wheel movement the guy is driving yeah, like yeah. He's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't he wasn't even trying to make it look legit. Uh I guess just yeah, overall the what's her name? Catherine Hewton. Over Pepiness. Oh, when the niece of Catherine Hepburn. When they first show up at the airport, for his like uh for uh, Doctor Prentice's parents, right? If you watch until they cut in that original shot, literally his dad, who I I'm sorry I do not know the name of the actor for. I could probably look it up, but uh, Doctor Prentice's dad, Roy Eaglean. Roy Eaglean, he got it. Uh, um, his jaw literally dropped. Like his jaw, oh, fuck off a vest. Uh, his jaw is literally hanging there. While uh, they talked, and it wasn't until they like <laughs> next shot. <laughs> I missed this. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, this is what I mean. Like I noticed like some really f- small funny things. Um, like I probably if I give a rewatch, I'd probably notice. I just kind of like watched it for this. <laughs> it, you're you're right. It is a little slow. I don't know if I would be like eager to rewatch this movie, but it, I thought it was a very good movie. Uh, another funny scene I thought was the ice cream scene. Where it's just like, oh yeah, oh yeah. This is- 17% of this, this city is Negro, and I run into every single one of them today. Y'all, <laughs> and uh, fucking, hey, this isn't what I ordered last time. But it's good. E B. Oh no, wait, it's fine. <laughs> and then the the uh, waitress is like, oh yeah, sure, I'll remind you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. I I I. Chewing bubble gum, baby. I do my job to pay for gum and weed. I live in the 60s. Uh, oh, one thing I thought they did really interesting with, like, I don't know if this was intentional or not, or maybe something I picked up. Uh, for about the first half hour, like, with the, especially, this is where I noticed, the, the way they did the cinematography, the, uh, Dr. Prentice was always very disconnected from, not necessarily, uh, Joey, but, like, at least the parents, right? So the way yeah. they thought it, he'd often be in, like, separate shots, and even when he wasn't, there was, was a, distant. felt like there was something in between, like they had the table there, and he was like, "Yeah." No, I, I, I thought that might have been intentional, just because. Oh yeah, but it's very. I, I don't. I wouldn't call this cinematography impressive, even for that. No. Eight I, period, it wasn't. It was impressive at all. I mean, I guess it had meaning, but it was very mild at best. It, it was distance, yeah. Like hands across rooms and like reverse shots of people's heads when they talked. It was mostly that kind. Or of... he was in the back, in the background, or something. Huh. Or, he was either in the background or the foreground, but he's always there's always a distance, always something between them. Uh, I agree with that completely. I like the part when the maid. I forgot to say this shit. Oh, the maid comes in the room and he covers his nipples with a <laughs> shirt. <laughs> well, it's, it was uh, all caps. Why are you covering your tits? Question <laughs> mark. I had no idea why he did that. Like, but did you see that bodice? It means <laughs> he probably has like tattoos from like gangs or something. Thirteenth Street gang. <laughs> That's, I was thinking there'd be like some secret about him because he was so reluctant to have his parents over. But Sex change. That's the original movie. It was, it was... White white women's right. But like I thought like, oh maybe he's like uh he had a bad past or his uh his mom's a Filipino or some shit. Speaking of interracial, love, do you remember when they were talking about how uh how like I forget he was either talking to the dad or the priest I think about like what their kids are gonna be like how their kids are gonna face issues. And like how uh, Joey thinks that they're gonna turn out to be the president, right? Yeah. Uh, half black, half white president. Man, it's Obama. Yeah. This is the future, man. They've been to the 1967. When was Obama born? <laughs> Find out. I mean, like when? when Obama. 69. <laughs> I'm just gonna type in Obama. Shut Obama? up! I'm doing that already. Get out of here. Uh, Marco he was, was born. Don't. I'm looking up August uh, 1961. Oh, he. Oh, they banged six years prior, and they just never found out until now. That's all. Oh, no, he's probably lying about his age. Remember, he was he was born in Nigeria after all. <laughs> oh wait, I did work in Africa. Wait, wasn't Barack Obama actually born in Hawaii? That's what they say. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. Or Kenya. He came from Hawaii. Were they? 
it's kind of the subtext that they just, oh no, wait, he said. Oh, that. true. That means that 10 days was actually 6 years. <laughs> yeah. They've been meeting up every every so often. Does they do that? That's before she was legal, because she was 24 or something, right? 23. So 6 years ago, she was 17. Oh, that's the real the truth of it. And his wife died 9 years ago, so it's, he's probably just banging the shit out of her for, for 6 years. Remember he said he, um, he said that he didn't though because he wanted to like talk no that's just what this he's, he's just saying he was just trying to make it's all talk look at the, look at the picture of obama look at the picture of um of um uh sydney Port- portier they look just like each other like oh my god no no sydney portier actually looks a lot like muhammad ali yeah but barack obama looks like muhammad ali's barack obama seaman oh uh, kind of looks like uh <laughs> president bush but darker Turns out watching this movie will make you a racist. So, uh, anything else to say about this movie before we close up? Not really. Are we gonna like put like beefs over every time we said something naughty? Because we did say a lot of naughty words. We yeah. I said fuck at least like. You said cunt, so I figured we shouldn't put that. <laughs> I said Helen Hunt. <laughs> no, you said you said that, that bitch was a cunt. <laughs> I'm like. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, maybe we'll censor this. I'll take some time to edit it. But regardless, thank you for listening, guys. Uh, we should be doing more of these in the future. I think the plan is we. Like, be- comment, or subscribe. Yeah, like, comment, or subscribe to, uh. Are you seriously doing that? Oh, I swear to God. That better, that better not be this site thing. <laughs> On YouTube? Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm trying to think of else. Obviously, if they see the video, they are on our fucking so, channel. you guys, I don't know if you're, like, a big fan of us or some shit, and you want to watch along, um, you can find the list, uh, just by looking up AFL. I, it might be a little tricky to figure out exactly what's going on, so I'll tell you the movie we'll be watching for next week. I guess this will be a good closer to end on. I thought yeah. that was great. Bosco thought it was eh. So the movie we'll be watching next week is the 1951 American drama film A Place in the Sun. All right. Okay. Thank you. For this? Th- oh, dude, this means terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. You've just been listening to a Goocast Media podcast, the greatest movie podcast.
Uh, so I'm probably just going to do like an intro, so don't talk until I introduce you. Sound good? But I'm, 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 that's pretentious cunt, pretentious cunt, pretentious cunt, 